This is the XUO TA30 tube headphone amp. Now, not only is it a tube headphone amp, but it has a digital to analog converter built in, or DAC as we tend to say. So you can plug it directly into your computer and hopefully get good sounding music out. So the question is for $710, does it sound any good? That's what I aim to find out. Hi-Fi Go sent me this XDUO TA30 for review, so thanks very much to them for sending it over. Now, as a tube amp, let me explain how it works if you're not familiar with tube amps. For starters, of the three tubes that you can see, the largest is this Chinese 5Z3P, which is a rectifier. Now, it's used for power rectification, converting AC to DC in the circuit. In most amps, this might be done by, you know, there are plenty of electronics to do that, but in some tube amps, they use tube rectifiers, and how the quality of the tube rectifier can influence the sound. Now, I didn't have much on hand which I could rotate around, but I did have a spare power rectifier for my good old Studio 6 here, which was this 5AR4 Soltec. Now, some tubes are compatible with different models and some are not. It can get quite complex, but this particular model of tube is compatible with this uh, 5AR4, so I could rotate it in quite safely. Now, on the other hand, the tubes at the front are the power tubes. So these are the ones that output power to your headphones. And in this case, they're a set of JJECC82. And they're new tubes, not new old stock. Now, a lot of tubes are available going back you know, many decades. And you can all easily rotate these around with other compatible models. And unfortunately, due to the uh, mail situation at the moment, I couldn't order any tubes in time to rotate anything in you know, compatible to to see how that had any effect on the sound. But the fun thing with tube amps is you can sometimes slightly tune them to your, to your preferences, maybe a little bit warmer, a little bit clearer. And sometimes with a good tube combination, you can get some really nice results. So it is a kind of uh, something you can kind of play around with if you do have a little bit of a budget above what you paid for the amp. Now, in terms of functionality otherwise, well, you, as I said, it has a digital to analog converter built in. So you have a number of inputs. At the moment, it's set to USB, as you can see here, it's showing the sample rate for the input. But you also have coaxial digital input, which the sound cards of some motherboards have, and the optical version of that is also available. And you have a Bluetooth input. Now, a lot of Chinese products these days seem to find that Bluetooth input to be uh, a, a popular feature to include, even in, in case of a tube amp with a Bluetooth input is in, in kind of my world a little bit unusual, but it's becoming more common these days. Now the Bluetooth input has the usual high quality uh, Bluetooth audio codec such as um, uh, Apple's uh, AAC, you have the aptX which it is selected automatically as it's paired with my computer and if you pair it with a device that has it, Sony's LDAC is also included which is supposedly a high res Bluetooth audio transmission method. So it has, if you want to hook it up wirelessly or wired, you have quite a lot of options there. And one of the others is an auxiliary input that bypasses the DAC altogether. So this is an analog input and you can connect this to anything, you know, a phone, a portable player. Uh, if you have some other digital to analog converter or a uh, phono stage. So if you want to use that as well, that possibility exists too. And other than that, you can. one of the funny things about the digital to analog converter is you can select the digital filter. Now, if you're not familiar with digital filters, I don't worry about this too much, but you have your usual things like brick wall, which you just saw show up there. Uh, we have a sharp, slow, uh, or, and uh, different phase versions of much sharp and flow, appetizing, um, hybrid, which is one I'm not too familiar with at the moment because it's a new ES9038 DAC that's built in there. And... Uh, well, brick wall. And if you're not familiar with these things, you can play around with them. Some people notice a difference, some people don't. Uh, I generally just suggest something like a brick wall filter or appetizing filter if you're listening to high quality acoustic music. If you're listening to electronica and that kind of thing, one of the slow filters is probably, uh, is technically better. Um, and other than that, you have your Bluetooth control button, BT, if you need to do set up pairing with another device. And one of the funny features I found on this is to change the language on here, you actually press this button, which is just dedicated to language. Uh, selecting which language you want, whether you're Chinese, English, or whatever else is built in there. Other than that, you just have your 6.3 millimeter or quarter inch uh, jack for headphone output. It's only single ended, which most tube amps are, because balanced is kind of difficult when you have to match tubes or match even left and right stages on some tubes, and your good old volume control. So, well, now I guess you want to know what I thought of the sound. 
I use the XUO TA30 amp with a variety of headphones. For example, we have Drop Sennheiser HD6XX, and I can recommend any of the Drop Sennheiser headphones would probably be a good match with this. Uh, one of the other questions somebody asked me is how they, it sounds with Focal's Utopias, and that was an interesting match. And I also, because there's enough power, it has 3,000 milliwatts of output, or 3 watts, I could also use them with Hi-Fi Man's Sasvaras, which you can just see behind my head there, and actually could drive them quite well, which was did a pretty good job. And though you wouldn't spend $6,000 to use with maybe a $700 tube amp, or we probably wouldn't even spend $3,000 or $4,000 for these to use with uh, the uh, TA30, it, it was an interesting match. Now, in terms of matchups, the X-Duo TA30 has a kind of overall warm sound signature, so it's not very sharp, bright and clear, for example, like you get with uh, a lot of solid state amps. It is more kind of relaxed and easy listening and not, you know, majorly detailed, but it has good headphone drive overall. And that made it a nice match with the Focal Utopias as they tend to be a little bit on the brighter side with that, that kind of stronger upper mid-range or kind of lower treble, which, uh, you know, that kind of... Uh, uh, hi-fi tuning that is very popular and that made for a kind of a smooth balance to these making them very easy listening well probably maybe we're not going to get their potential out of them because you're just going to lose some detail compared to some of the other high-end amps and DACs that you can get but what it did give in character overall again was a smooth easy listen and so I thought I'd say can you improve on that by you know rolling tubes and, and maybe using a dedicated DAC so I rolled in this, as you saw before, this 5AR4 Sovtech uh, rectifier in place of this big tube. Now, it doesn't make the amp look very impressive with this much smaller tube in there. But if you look at this uh, 5Z3P from China, it's got kind of the plates and they're kind of wonky and it's very cheaply assembled and very cheaply made. And even this relatively inexpensive Sovtech made for a nice upgrade to that with a bit of improvement in clari overall clarity from the amp. I tried, you know, just for out know, of interest sake, a very expensive Mullard rectifier tube, which is actually on my Studio 6 just out of view here, and that didn't make a, a significant improvement above this 5AR4. So I probably would reckon, as, at least as far as tube rolling goes, maybe if you consider the budget for this amp, maybe closer to $800, we're rolling in some maybe some different tubes in place of these ECC82s, then maybe you can make this sound, you know, a little bit better. Unfortunately, due to the mail situation at the moment, I couldn't get any uh, other tubes in time to do, shoot the review and get, it, get an impression how it goes rolling in the power tubes. But I have seen on the forum some people who have other topping amps did get some nicer tubes for them with good results. So definitely factor that into your budget if you do end up getting one of these amps. I tried it as well, you know, the inbuilt USB DAC versus, say, Shit Audio's Yggdrasil or the topping D90 that I have here. And while both of those DACs improved the overall clarity, for example, if you're listening to a singer, the, the singer's position on the stage was a little bit more clear and other instruments were a little bit more clear and, you know, in a good acoustic recording, it wasn't enough that I would say spend may suggest spending major amounts of money on a DAC to use with this and, you know, spending buying a cheap DAC to use with it. Well, it already has a cheap DAC built in. Actually, just as it was with some better tubes is probably what I'd recommend for using the, uh, the TA30. But again, overall, it's overall character, whatever I plugged in. I even tried the coaxial digital input from a high-end streamer in the case of the, my SoundAware D300 reference, which is um, sitting on, under my rack just out of view here. And while each thing made a little bit of an improvement, I think upgrading the tubes made the most improvement overall. And if you can, as I said, if you make that, it's a, a uh, make the deck an $800 deck with some tube upgrades, I reckon it becomes a nice, smooth and easy listening amp to listen to music with. The only disappointment overall with this was that the gain is re set really high. So even with the Utopias or HD6XX, other than the Sasvaras, which are just very insensitive, I couldn't get really above 9 o'clock on the dial before I was already listening moderately loud, even with kind of acoustic music, which, you know, most of the, a lot of the acoustic music I have isn't that loud. So like, there's a lot of volume range which I couldn't use, and it would have been more ideal if the gain had been set maybe about maybe half what it is so that it can actually get up to about the mid-range on the dial for kind of moderate moderately loud listening so the other problem with that is at the very start of the movement there was some channel imbalance like you only got one channel initially so that gives you kind of usable volume ranges about from the kind of eight o'clock to the nine o'clock mark which is not really very much at all at least unless you're one of those people who listens really loud or you have an analog input source which is really quiet say like a phone which may be one of the reasons they set the gain so high 
But for ordinary listening, just plugging into a computer, other than that gain issue, it actually was a nice, smooth and easily easy listening amp to use. So if that's the kind of thing you're after and you're not after super micro detail, but you want something that will drive headphones very competently and you just want a one box solution, the only other possible downside is that it actually puts out quite a lot of heat from all the components. It gets quite warm. And I've got my air conditioning blaring on above me because if I don't have it on, it gets quite hot in this room with amps such as these running. So overall, I think the TA30 is, is a good buy for around the $700 mark. You get a lot of features in there, and especially if you want something like the Bluetooth receiving, like you want to use it from a computer without hooking up in, in a wired mode, just wireless or from a phone or whatever. So have that variety of features there. It does a good job. It's going to be you know a different buy to something like buying a dedicated tube amp for that kind of money where there are a lot of little makers out there that do make those things so feature wise and performance wise it did apart from those couple of little caveats where i'd say you need better tubes and the gain issue it's actually quite a nice amp and it has quite a bit quite a bit of potential if you do go out and buy some tubes for it so that's the xduo ta30 and i hope you liked the review if you do have any questions or comments Oh, did you actually buy one of these amps and or one of the X-Duo amps and what were your impressions? Do leave them in the comments below. Constructive criticism is also welcome. So also thanks to everyone who's been supporting these videos. If it weren't for people like my supporters, I wouldn't be able to make these videos at all. If you'd like to become one of my supporters, in exchange, I'll happily give you buying advice anytime you like, which will save you way more than the amount of support that you'd be paying for. And also you can see my videos and product impressions in advance of everyone else. And you can also influence what stuff I review in the future. So if any of that appeals to you, you can check out the links that you see on screen or in the description and consider becoming a supporter. You can also buy this from Hi-Fi Go or you can, if you, you can support me as well by buying it from Amazon where I get a little bit back if you do buy it through the Amazon link in the description. So thanks once again for watching and I'll see you online.